It's Sabbath school time, it's Sabbath school time. Glad you came to join us to hear about Jesus and His love. We're glad you came to join us. It's Sabbath school time, it's Sabbath school time. We're glad you came to join us to hear about Jesus and His love. We're glad you came to join us. Wonderfully wet day today, boys and girls. And how are you doing? <laughs> now, I'm so happy because of the rain. Now, last week, there was so much wind blowing for the entire week. In parts of the video where there were parts of the video where we couldn't hear much. Now, Thanks to one of our viewers from last week, they gave us a nifty trick using things that we have at home luckily so that we would be able to hear the wind around us but not the wind in the microphone. So we want to thank the viewer for that suggestion and the person knows who they are. Thank you very, very much. Now, before we go any further, Let's pray on this wet day. Dear Lord, thank you for the rain. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for the rain, which helps the plants to grow. We were waiting for the rain so long. Thank you for providing it. Thank you for your love in sending the sunshine and the rain on everyone. Bless us, dear Lord. Help us to have a wonderful time today at Sabbath School. Amen. Now it's time for our song service. Jesus loves me. Jesus. 
that the rain was falling. Lucky thing for us here, there was no thunder and lightning. It wasn't a storm, it was just a lot, a lot of rain. And I'm just so happy because of the rain watering my garden. Now, sometimes when there's too much rain, whoo, yeah, lots of rain. Sometimes when there's too much rain, it, <laughs> Ooh, I think I might have to take this video inside, but I'm enjoying it so much. I think you'll enjoy it with me. Now, sometimes when there's too much rain, destruction comes, and lots of times, ooh, lots of water. Lots of times when there's rain, it can make us afraid. When there, when storms come, it makes us afraid. Now, troubles and trials are like the storms of life. And when the storms come, we become free. Like when there's lots of lightning, we are afraid. And the thunder, have you ever heard really, really loud thunder that it sounded like if the sky was about to split? Well, one time, we were camping and there was a storm that rolled through and we were in our tents and then there was some lightning and my family and I were in the tent and there was lightning and thunder and I was like no I have to get out of this tent we have to stop camping and get out of this tent right now because I was afraid I thought that the lightning would have come and struck the tent and injured all of us in the tent. But we didn't go and we survived. We passed through the storm. Sometimes life brings us really tough things, tough situations like sickness, like loss of jobs when parents lose their jobs. And I remember when I was growing up, my mom she lost her job and it was a really tough time going up because we had to take the bus to go to school and we didn't have money to go to school and we didn't have money to buy certain things and it was a, a tough time. And I remember walking all the way from secondary school, which would be high school in other places and I had to walk about an hour to get back home in a long year of school. And so, sometimes bad situations come and we become sad by them. But we don't have to let the bad situations, the stormy times of life, bring us down. We can allow them to build our character, to make us strong. And just as when the rain comes, 
the plants grow and they become stronger and healthier, we too, when the, the bad times, the storms of life come, can allow God to strengthen us through those tough times. Oh, I think the rain is getting a bit too much for us to be out here. So we are going to take the devotion inside. Wow. Well, it was a fun time outside in the rain, but I think I had enough water. So I've come inside and now it is time to have our devotion. And so far, boys and girls, I'm not sure if you picked up on the theme what all of our devotions were about, but our devotions were about knowing God. And knowing God is very important because if we don't know him and we don't understand who he is, then we might not want to serve him because we might think he's someone who he is not. We might think that he might be a hurtful God when really and truthfully, he is a God of love. So we are continuing our theme today of knowing God. And the scripture that our devotion is based on today is Ephesians 3.19. Ephesians 3.19 says, And to know the love of Christ, with which passeth all knowledge, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Boys and girls, that text tells us that when we know the love of Christ, we receive all knowledge. Now, many of you are still doing school. You're still having school right now. Your schools, most of them, if not all of them, would have moved to online classes because of how things would have changed. And sometimes schoolwork can be very hard. I remember when I was going to school, there were points in time when we had lots and lots of work and it was hard at times, but I still enjoyed doing my schoolwork. I enjoyed learning things. But you know, boys and girls, as much as I learned my schoolwork, as much as I got more knowledge in the things of around me in the things that I was learning, you know, that was not the most important knowledge. You see, as it says in Ephesians 3.19, when we know the love of Christ, that knowledge passes any knowledge that we can have. So we could, I suppose, study all day, go to sleep, wake up, study some more, and gain as much knowledge as could possibly be gained, but that wouldn't be enough. But if we know the love of God, that is the greatest knowledge. See, boys and girls, when we know Jesus, we are filled with him. And when we are filled with him, we are, we receive the best thing that we can receive. When we know God, we receive eternal life. Right now, I am so happy because we have a little girl who wants to use her talents for God. Boys and girls, everyone has talents. Some of you might have talents of singing, others might have talents of storytelling, of writing, of drawing, of playing an instrument, or of simply being a friend. What? Ever your talent might be, God wants you to use it for his service. You can use your talent to win others for God. So, boys and girls, right now, we are going to be blessed by Amber, who will be singing for us.
want to thank Amber for that wonderful song and how she used her talent to bless us today. Now, at this time, we will have our mission story from around the world. And today, our mission story comes to us from the lands of the black belly sheep, of the green monkey, of beautiful white sandy beaches on the west and the rugged Atlantic coastline on the east. Can you guess what country it is that we will be looking at today? If you guess the beautiful island of Barbados, you would be correct. And today our story is entitled The Home missionary. Now before we get into that story, remember last week you were given a challenge to have your jars and your notebook to fill the jar with money so that you will be able to buy tokens to give to someone and in the meantime you would write in your notebook all of the things that you can think of in which you can be missionaries for God. Now, we don't have to go anywhere to be missionaries. And today, our story is about a home missionary. Now, when we usually think of missionaries, we think of people who go to far away countries and our missionary stories took us many different places around the world. And today, our story is a story of being a missionary at home. We don't have to travel places to be a missionary. We can be missionaries right where we live. So today, our story is about a lady called Audrey. Now, Audrey had just become baptized and it was really exciting to know God and she was really, really happy. But there was an interesting message being preached at her church and she had never heard it before. Well, she hadn't heard many things before because she had just become a Christian. And this message was about the love of God. And she was so intrigued. The love of God? A God that cares? A God that is gentle and kind? A God who forgives us? despite what we have done, as long as we come to him and ask him to forgive us? Wow, this was so amazing to her. Audrey was a mother to a son at that time. And that son was about six years old. And there were meetings being held to discuss this topic of God's character, who God is. And Audrey decided that she would go. But she wouldn't only take her son, but she took 
her three nieces along with her and some of her cousins as well. Because not only did she want to hear the message, but she wanted as many people as possible to hear the message of who God was. So there were meetings in the park, one of the parks, and she took her family along. She didn't have much money, but she made sandwiches and juice, and she took her son, her three nieces, and cousins about between five or six young children with her every week she would go and she would take them so that they could hear and learn about God with her. Now, fast forward to today. Do you know that one of her nieces does Sabbath school online every week? Yep, boys and girls, I am one of her nieces. And because of Audrey taking her family along and being a missionary at home and sharing the gospel with her family through her life, I came into church and got to know Jesus. Jesus who loves every single one of us. Boys and girls, you can be a missionary. You don't have to do anything spectacular. You don't have to make these wonderful, fancy things. But you know, just by living for Jesus, just by doing what is right, sharing a smile, telling others through your example about Jesus, people can come to know him. And before we close up, I'll just show, share with you one more little bit about when I was growing up and about Audrey's example. Now, every Friday night, we would, well, for every Friday, we would welcome the Sabbath by going to the beach with another family. And that was so exciting. We would go and we would sit by the water and as the sun dipped below the horizon, we would welcome the Sabbath singing songs. And I was so excited and felt so much peace and love and those days were really really wonderful days and I also remember on Friday nights the rest of my family they wouldn't go to church and so on Friday nights I always wanted to go with Auntie Audrey by her house by this time now she was married and she lived somewhere else and I would go by her house and I would stay there every Friday night. I would go to sleep there. And in the morning, I would wake it and I would be so happy to welcome the Sabbath. Boys and girls, we can show others the joy and the love and the excitement that comes from being a Christian by our example. We don't have to take a plane or a boat or a train or whatever to go to distant lands to be missionaries. We can be missionaries right to where we are by doing, by living for Jesus. We don't have to do anything special, but just by living for Jesus, we can be missionaries just as Audrey was.